Hey guys, Speculator Seth here, and today I just want to make a quick video about backtesting a strategy that I saw. So I spent a lot of time trolling the subreddits related to trading, and I saw this post that did quite well on the day trading subreddit promoting an EMA crossover strategy. And there were some people in the thread saying, well, why don't you backtest it and show us how it will go? So I figured, why not? It's a pretty simple strategy, and there is nothing that I love more then crushing the hopes of young aspiring traders by showing that their strategies are complete junk and don't work. I mean, I haven't back tested this one yet, but because it's a moving average crossover, I can pretty much already tell you exactly how this one is going to go. But hey, I mean, who knows? Maybe these, uh, you know, periods that they're using are particularly effective or something. I don't know. Okay, so before I get into the code, I do want to apologize for taking so long to make this a video, but we had like a crazy, crazy windstorm here in Utah. I mean, it was like 90 mile an hour wind. There is not a street in my suburb that does not have a tree blown over. Pretty crazy, but uh, I really wanted to get to this and back test it for you guys because I don't know, it just... It just makes me excited to backtest something that was, uh, I don't know, popular and I don't think works. So let's uh, see, I've, I've written up some code here now. So if you're not familiar with Ninja Trader 8 programming, not to worry, it's really simple and pretty self-explanatory, but I do have a video over here that goes over some of the key functions so that you can understand how it works. Um, but you really, you don't have to understand anything about the programming to understand what I'm doing here in this video. So what I have here is pretty simple. I'm just saying if I cross above, the fast one crosses above the slow one, then I'm going long. And then if I'm crossing below, the fast one is crossing below the slow one, and then I'm going to go short. Uh, so let's back test this. I think we could actually back test this on a pretty big set of data here. So I'm just going to come in. Let's just go to uh, the beginning of Donald Trump's term we'll ignore that friday because yeah, you know who cares all right and then we're going to select our strategy i have it in here reddit simple ema i mean i have way too many strategies in here and i will select the e-mini is what we're going to run this on and let's include commissions and run and it should be pretty quick i would think four years of data i don't think that would take my computer too long to run through and there we go. And it doesn't work. In fact, it's really bad. 26 for 25% win rate. That is so bad. That is so bad. Now, so what we can do is we can go here to the chart. And because I have these uh, lines here, add chart indicator, it will add the EMAs to the strategy chart for us. So we can kind of look. And the thing that I think you will notice right away is that moving average crossovers are very slow. You can see here that we had a, a you know a little bit of a pullback and then he turned back down. And it was enough of a pullback to, to get you out potentially. But then when it actually takes the trade, it's like three bars later. And so this is really gonna mess you up, especially on a one minute time frame. It's there's gonna be a lot of situations. It's like you can see right here where uh, you get in and then by the time you get the out signal, it's already you've pretty much lost all of your profits. Uh, that one's particularly <laughs> unfortunate, although it did take a teeny, teeny, tiny little profit. All right, so you're giving up a lot of profits when you do make money. Uh, the good news is though, is that our winners are larger than our losers by at least double. So I have a couple of ideas on things that we can do to maybe try and improve it a little bit. One thing that I think will make a big difference is we can try and incorporate that third moving average, even though he didn't explicitly say how to use it. There could be a situation where there's a crossover, but it's happening on one side or the other of that longer moving average. So we can make sure that if you're going to take the short, that you know both the fast and slow moving averages are below that long moving average first so that we're never trading against the kind of midterm trend. So let's try that. I'm just going to add. Okay, so I've added it so that 
the fast moving average has to be um, above the long moving average and the slow also has to be above the long moving average. So all of those conditions have to apply in order for our strategy to trigger. So before we were getting a profit factor of about 0.81 and a percent profitable of 25%, let's run it again and see what we get here. Oh, always make sure you click the compile button first. Compile that, change. Okay, so that actually improved the strategy a little bit by eliminating some of those um, bad trades. So now we get a 30% profitable and a profit factor of 0.88. Now, there is something that I want to point out here that you can see really clearly in this backtest result that I noticed trips so many traders up. And when I say trips them up, I mean like they'll backtest and they think they got something that works and really they don't. And that is this strategy does way better on long trades than it does short trades. And hey, you know what? That has been the environment that we've been in. And that is the way that the E-mini tends to trade is Hey, if your strategy is going along, then it's going to do a lot better. <laughs> and so I think sometimes what we'll do is we'll curve fit it and say, well, I'll only take long trades and I'll only take it when the day is like a really good up day or something like that. But what you're going to find is that that's a little bit too optimized for those conditions. And then you're going to think that it's those conditions and it's Okay, so I have one other idea that I want to include here, and that is like, this is a, a little bit more strict of an entry condition. So what happens if we make the exits be just a, a little bit more uh, touchy, you know, because right now we're getting like our average losing trade is seven ticks. So maybe two ES handles. Let's see if maybe we can bring that in a little bit. Okay, so I basically I just took what we had before. So when it exits, it doesn't care where we are in relation to the longer moving average. It will just exit if we have another cross. Let's make sure we compile this time. Okay, so it looks like when we change that, we kind of go back down in the profit factor and the probabilities once again. Okay, well, um, let's try one more thing. Let's get rid of that exit. And I have these up here. I always put these up here. I'm gonna give it. Let's let's make it a little. Um, let's make it a little more tight. Let's say four e mini points. Let's see if it's good for four e mini points. All right. So these our two lines are going to set an explicit profit target and stop loss, and that might give us a little bit more insight into just how effective the actual signal itself is. Okay. So that time we got. 0.86. So that actually did improve it a little bit. Okay, so I did actually try a couple of other things, but I didn't want to make the video too long. I'm sure you guys will have a ton of suggestions. So just let me know in the comments what do you think I should change and I'll back test it and tell you guys in the comments what happens. Or maybe we'll make a follow up video later. Okay, so in closing, there's two things that I want to point out. First, most technical analysis indicators are lagging. And that really is a problem with trading. You want to be in first. Well, maybe not the first first, but you want to be in before the move happens, right? And a technical indicator, by the time it shows it to you, the trade is already gone. The second thing that I want to point out, though, is that a simple strategy is, is simply not going to work in today's markets anymore. I mean, come on. You don't think that a robot has tried and back tested this and looked at it and seen that, oh yeah, this, this doesn't really work. Even with NinjaTrader here, I can go in and I can have it try and generate its own strategies. I'm sure that there is a computer out there that has tried back testing this strategy before. If it worked, they would be trading it and they would probably already arbitrage that out of the market. So if you are going to try a purely technical strategy, it's going to have to be something fairly sophisticated that a backtesting computer isn't just going to randomly run into. So I have a bigger tutorial about backtesting strategies coming up that will kind of go through a couple more of the issues that you might run into when you're backtesting a strategy. Also remember that I live stream every day. You can come in and we can just chat. Sometimes I do well, sometimes I don't, but it's always a great company. So I will see you guys then. And in the meantime, 
Stay profitable, friends.